We are back. Again. Tim, welcome to your own apartment yeah, and recording studio. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> How was your weekend? Uh, it's still the weekend. It's good, though. Last week, we talked about entertaining Razzing Tim being back. Mm. You said Razzy Tim trumps all other Tims. For the entertainment value, yes. <laughs> I don't know about your emotional well-being, but <laughs> for an Nobody entertainment standpoint, absolutely. Yeah, let's be honest. <laughs> Tim, do you have a story for us today? Um, have you ever bought anything off Fanatics? I have. And I think Fanatics is probably going to be a pretty big deal here in the coming years. So I hear. Semi-relevant, hobby-wise. Uh, semi. I think the last time I bought off Fanatics, it was a White Sox car decal. Okay. Not very exciting. It was like a $9 purchase. Okay. I generally buy my, uh, this is not a paid advertisement, but I generally buy my hats off of lids and not Fanatics because uh, the selection's a little bit better, I feel like. Okay. It's not a dig on Fanatics. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, if I were to buy something on Fanatics, I know there's a lot of stuff out there. I just don't generally browse over there. I think I might have a reason to now, though. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Um, got a little bored yesterday and uh, picked up the phone like I do. Bored as in the lady in your life was telling you a story again about work? <laughs> <laughs> she was at work. <laughs> okay. And uh, I was uh, on the couch playing some God of War on PS5 and um, took a little pee break and came back. Scrolled through one of those Raz rooms that I happened to be in, and uh, there was a line for $575 worth of Fanatics gift cards, uh, online codes. And? This was a slightly different format than the routine Raz. This was one of those uh, bottoms, uh, formerly the Fatals. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> so with a little meth and a little discount, uh, this was a 10-spot Raz where spots 8, 9, and 10 on the final roll had to fork over $184 each while you, whoever wins uh, got all of them for free. What do you even call that? It's not a Fatal 4-way. No, they just call them bottoms now, I think. so, Or a Fatal, <laughs> you know, yeah. I think they call that a soggy bottom, Tim. A soggy bottom? <laughs> uh, foggy bottom? No. I don't know. We're going soggy bottom, soggy but tell bottom. us what happened. I like soggy bottom. Um, yeah. I now have $575 <laughs> worth of Fanatics yeah. gift cards to you. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a chunky, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I know our listeners love this, too, and are fully supportive of you and these endeavors. In fact, we got a voicemail from just this past week. Do you want to go ahead and play that? Sure. Let's see. Tim, Boston Steve here. And often, I have to say, I feel like you're my only hope in this hobby. And that point you just made is spot on. And if anybody, including Chad, doesn't agree with you, I want you to look at them straight in the eye and say, make like a tree and get out of here. Because what you just said is precisely correct. And everybody should listen to you. Unless, of course, what you just said was gambling advice, and then I recommend that nobody listen to you. <laughs> oh, come on. Could have left it. There's an Adam. Oh, it's a 101. <laughs> Someone call for a doctor? Always entertaining, accidentally informative. We are bringing nostalgia and camaraderie to the hobby. That's Tim. I'm Chad, and this is Pack to the Future podcast, season two, episode four. This week's going to be a fun one, Tim. We have PC updates. We've got some Ooh. grading news and timelines about PSA. Mm -hmm. We have our own personal mail days and a little bit of a mailbag as well. Ooh. How about that for a potpourri of all things inside the lives of these two podcasters? And the hobby. Yeah. And the hobby as well. And guys, you know, you can find us here, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Go check out our website, pttfpodcast.com, where you can find our YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. You can find our podcasts. You can find mm -hmm. our affiliate links. You can get discounts to go shop at all of your favorite hobby-related stores. Hmm. Should we get into it? Let's do it. All right, Tim. So first of all, we're going to be talking about our own personal collection or PC updates. Um, something that was not synonymous with Tim in collecting 
oh. in previous years. Oh, that, yeah. I but 2023, new man. New man, PC Tim. <laughs> this is PC Tim. That's right. <laughs> well, PC Tim, uh, y- you have any updates for us? I do. Um, I've mentioned that I'm still trying to chew my way through the MJ Michael Jordan basic set PSA registry checklist. And I'm starting from the top and working my way down, skipping over the rookie card because that's uh, going to be one of those uh, quote unquote grail chases or re obtaining of a rookie card. I'll, <laughs> I'll work on that quest name, but. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. So you jump over, you know, 86, 87, uh, 88, and I'll work on those, like I said. But from 1989 through 1991, I have now checked off those cards. No kidding. Yeah. So that includes the 1989 through 1991 hoops. Um, all in PSA 9, a 1991 Skybox, Jordan, and then the 1991 Upper Deck. So for those five cards that I picked up this week, how much money do you think I spent? Yeah, that, I was going to ask you how much those cost. So the 89 worries me a little bit. I'm going to say, how many cards were there total? Five total. There were five. I'm going to say less than 200. Let me go with 149. Ooh, you got close. You were off by a factor of 10%. Okay. Uh, so you're right that the 1989 uh, cost the most out of it, but it was still incredibly affordable at just $50 nice. for a PSA 9. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And so $136 total for that. But you know what I did before I checked out? I went over to our own PTTF podcast webpage and clicked the affiliates link um, where I scrolled over to the eBay icon, hopped over to my own in-basket cart, <laughs> and checked out. <laughs> generating our show a little bit of something after costing me something. I but like for that. our listeners out there, it costs them nothing and gives us a little something. There you go. And you did that through your personal account, which I love. Yeah. All right. Very good, yeah. Tim. So there you go. I uh, like that. Fleshing very out affordable. my personal collection and very affordable. That's the ridiculous part. You know, these PSA nines, man. Um, it's like finding gold. Well, Tim, speaking of affordable, I've decided to dabble in the affordable realm of the hobby as well. Oh, look at you. Little Mr. Big Spender lately goes back to the dollar bin. Is that what I'm hearing? I did go to the dollar bin (laughs) at the card shop, and I found some things that have really inspired me to look a little bit different at the collection, and I'm going to start a Denver Broncos binder. Not the dating site. That is correct. (laughs) So I found a few different cards inside this dollar box that really stood out to me. It started with a 2005 playoff prestige Jake Plummer Whoa. League leader jersey, Whoa. just a little jersey patch. Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer, and it was a duel. It also had Drew Bledsoe on there. <laughs> what? Both of those were game worn little patches. It was like three bucks. Oh my goodness! And I figured, hey, this is a good way to start it. And also, just next to this card, a 2013, totally certified, stitches in time two color patch, game worn, Bill Romanowski. Wow. This card was numbered to 25. You're really throwing these names back. Yeah. Oh, man. These ones, they they hit home for me. <laughs> and then lastly, this one was in a dollar bin, a 2020 Mosaic. It was a flea flicker, so it has Elway, Terrell Davis, Eddie McCaffrey. Clarify flea flicker. Name of an insert. Name of the insert. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and those three guys on the card, it was a prism. It looks great, and, you know, it was a buck. I figure why not throw it into a binder? There you go, man. Nice. So, so those I are fun was, cards. I was really fun happy pickups. with those three. Now, a couple other things, though, real quick with Uh-oh. the PC. Okay. I did find a card, and I had forgotten about this. I did not buy this for me. Uh-huh. It is an Autographics 1997 Nick Anderson. Huh. Now, oh. I know that one of our listeners is a huge Nick Anderson fan. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know who it is but I don't remember with 100% certainty who the Nick Anderson collector is. Oh, specifically Nick Anderson, shoot. I did not buy this for me. Mm-hmm. I bought this for the listener. Mm-hmm. Reach out to us. Tell me who you are. I'm almost certain I know who it is, and I'm going to send you this card if you want it. Um, it's a super good-looking card. That if is. anyone wants this card, it's all yours. Do I show it? Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, lastly, Tim, I'm in a little bit of a conundrum about what to do with part of my PC. The 2012 Prism Football Silver Collection, Mm -hmm. the quarterbacks I've been chasing, I have a number of them, I'm going to keep them. But I did dabble in some of the other players as well. And I don't know what to do with those cards. I think that I could probably sell some of them now 
and get a fair amount of equity to go chase some other cards. Uh, I see what you're doing. And I just don't know. I've got a Julio Jones PSA 9, an Adrian Peterson SGC 10, but here's the big one. The heck? Okay. Megatron, Calvin Johnson, Uh PSA 10. Yeah. Now there's only nine of these cards that exist. And this was the same season that he broke the receiving yards. Such a record. Right. Now Calvin Johnson doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Nope. But back in that period of time, I thought, okay, why don't I just collect a silver of that entire set? That's what you were trying for, correct? Now, that's going to take forever to do. Now, the quarterbacks, I still want to do that, but mm-hmm. I think I just want to limit it to the quarterbacks. Interesting. So I, I don't really know. I've had this card like in a bubble mailer to send off to an auction house a few different times, and I pull it back out because yeah. I, I know once I sell it out there that I'm likely not going to see it again or want to buy it again. So I just don't know what to do. And I think... The reason that I bring that up is all of us in the hobby have had those moments yeah. where we just don't know what to do with a card. It's like, do I really want to keep this? Do I want to sell it and try and go buy something else? So we're right there with you. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, more to come on that in future weeks. That's a tough call on the Megatron. I mean, the pop count is so low. I know. You might not get that back ever. Well, that's the thing. That's just it. That's one of those cards where like, you know, you just might not see that surface again. I know. If you ever change your mind. Maybe so. I hang on to it for like a trade night. I think out dip. of the cards you listed, that's the one you hang on to. Okay. Jettison I, the other two. I appreciate that. I approve. Yeah. Well, speaking of PSA, Tim, I want to move on to some grading. And we have some grading mm. news and also some updates. I've done a little PSA dabbling okay. in the past couple of months. Now, two submissions of mine that have come back from PSA. Yep. Uh, we'll start with those, if that sounds good. Absolutely. And we'll get into some PSA data. Um, I sent in two, two different submissions, one for a crossover, and then one was a four-card submission that we just have the grades back from that I'm going to have you reveal to me uh, here in just a moment. Okay. Uh, the crossover wait. was a 2012 Prism Silver Russell Wilson SGC 9.5, and I wanted to get all of those, like I just mentioned, yeah. into a PSA slab. Now, I sent that in. It arrived at PSA. I want to give you a little update on time as part of this. Okay. It arrived at PSA December 30th. Mm -hmm. It was entered into their system on January 9th and then shipped back to me January 30th. Like back in your mailbox or shipped Shipped back to you on the 30th? Okay. Shipped back to me. So that was 14 to 15 business days is all that crossover took. Yeah. Three weeks real time. Which is pretty impressive, I thought. Mm. Now, that one, of course, came back a nine uh, with the dead corpse of the SGC 9.5 label (laughs) laid across the card. I remember you mentioning that in the group chat. But I was really impressed with the time that it took to get those back. With the regular four card submission, you know, there's different tiers there. We can talk about those in a minute. But to give an update on time here with value, the four cards I submitted got there the same day on December 30th, entered into the system on January 6th. Mm Mm-hmm shipped back on February 24th for 33 business days. Wow. Pretty good for a value service, which currently is looking right around $35 a card. Okay. An estimated business time of 65 days. That's certainly better than the, what, uh, 14 months, uh, oh. I recall, oh, uh, getting the submission back. So, so bad. Yep. So PSD has done really well with getting those cards back we do have some data about their cards that we figure now would be a good time to drop into this potpourri segment. This is data from January of 2023. Okay. They graded Fairly just recent. over a million cards mm-hmm. down 5% from December of 2022, but up from 750,000 a year ago. Mm. Pokemon clearly leads the way. Okay. In number of cards followed by baseball, basketball, and then football. of the cards that were graded were from the 2020s. Wow. That's a lot. A lot of new cards. Yeah. A lot of Pokemon cards. Modern, modern, ultra modern. Yeah. But still doing a great job of coming back. And of course, if you want to learn a little bit more about pricing, I don't think there's been any significant updates to pricing other than the value bulk orders that have been added over the past couple of months. We'll have it up on our YouTube. You can take a look at this now and you can go take a look at the website to see the cost and the estimated time to come back there. But Tim... I yep. hinted at this earlier. Yep. I have four cards that I submitted. Okay. They, I thought that they would be back by now. They yeah. used to ship from California, and it would take two days to get to me. They have not arrived. They're still in the mail. But what we did is the missus printed out a list mm. of the cards, and she put little stickies over what the grades were. 
I see that. So if you don't mind, the first two are particularly meaningful. Why don't we just go ahead and rip right through these, Oof. read off what the first two cards are, Okay. because those two cards you gifted me. Oh, do we want to save those for last? No. Uh, no we'll your just call, go man. Order? Your call. Okay. I say just rip right into it and go ahead. Well, if I recall, uh, these were uh, the 2010 playoff contenders, uh, Demarius Thomas uh, variation and uh, the normal rookie card autos that I bought raw off of eBay. And I was actually pretty surprised at the the condition of them. And so I'm curious about these two now. I think they both looked really good. They and look it clean, would right? not surprise me if they both got nines or higher. Oh. So Tim, go ahead and rip off the, the top sticky. All right. So this is the running forward auto, which is um, the standard version. What do I got? Mint nine. Hey, all right. Very nice. That's pretty good for how old that card yeah, was. Yeah, absolutely. And coming from eBay, too. eBay sitting in some dude's binder, like in a yellowed top loader. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's great. That's I like fantastic. that a lot. There's hope. I really like that. All right. Now for the variation. What do we got? Mint nine. All right. Very good. You had a perfect eye for those. You said that they were in good condition. You nailed it. I was hoping for tens, though, honestly. Were you really? They look like tens to me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes they just give you a nine. Do you think PSA just, you know, like when they by default see an old card like that these days, they're just like, eh. Yeah, you're going to get a nine. You're going to get a nine <laughs> by default. You're going to get a nine. I've seen far worse ultra modern cards get tens. Yeah. yeah. Well, save, save the Von Miller for last. Okay. And then go to the very bottom one there. Okay. So uh, we've got. Tell uh, us what we have. 2012 Panini Prism, Alex Smith. Adding to that 2012 silver mm -hmm. quarterback collection. This one I do not think is going to grade well. No? No, How seven come? or an eight. What did you notice? There was a dimple, and it's very off-centered, even for that 2012 year. So that's always debatable, right? Like what the dimples do to a card grade. Mm -hmm. And if it was BGS, you'd be able to say, hey, okay, that very clearly affected right. the surface. But it we may don't have know. had a scratch on it, too. Seven okay. or an eight. So bottom one, Tim. Seven bottom one, Tim. Uh, that's the third one on this list. All right. Very good. Go ahead. Yep. I apologize. I got gotcha. you. I was just rolling with it because it doesn't matter. They can't see the list. So. <laughs> PSA eight. Hey, all right. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Yeah. I've I actually mean, considered sending that one in a number of times and held off because I didn't think it would get a good grade. It's acceptable, though. That's uh, the equivalent of a raw card pulled from the pack mm. um, by grading standards. Mm. So, All you right. Know, you're preserving a card in its original condition. Now, like speaking of which, this, this last card is one of my bigger cards in my Von Miller collection, which I like to think that I've got a pretty nice Von Miller collection. You do have a pretty good Von Miller collection. So this is the 2011 Panini Prime Signatures uh, Von Miller Black One of One. This one seems like it's got a nice thumbnail indentation right on the front of the card. Oh, no. Who would do that? Six to an eight. That's, that's a bad breaker. No-no. Uh, uh, this is a beautiful card, though. It's gorgeous. It's going to be a six or an eight. Six, two, and eight. Six, two, and eight. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, 8.5. Hey, all right. I could kill you for that pause. <laughs> that is the thing I hate more than anything else in this world. <laughs> well, it wasn't a six or an eight. And I just get thrown off by these half grades. You know, like PSA, really? Like, just make up your mind. Eight just, point, they didn't know what to do with the dirty fingernail. No, they didn't. Yeah. Huh. But there we go. 8.5. 8.5. That's a fun little, uh, that's a, that's a very PC, uh, PSA submission. Yeah. I like I, it. I would agree. Fun well, cards. Well, thank you, Tim. Yeah. So that's our PSA update. We did some stats. We did some timing. Mm -hmm. We did a reveal. Anything else you have to say about PSA? No. Um, so the pricing, I mean, uh, I think just to recap there, the value bulk, um, that's a big addition, you know, uh, to have that back, um, and to have the promise of 65 business days. Right. Um, or just 65 calendar days, right? I think they're all business days. Business days? days? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, just to have that as an option at that uh, price point again, um, I think that'll bring back some of the fun in the hobby and kind of help with uh, card values recovering. Which is 25 bucks, which is fantastic. 25 bucks. And then, um, you know, there are some group submitters out there. I'm not going to name any single one uh, by name because, um, again, not a paid advertisement. But uh, if you do a little research, um, specifically on the express levels, um, if you want those back within five business days, um, but are willing to take the time hit by submitting through a group submitter, which is kind of counterintuitive. But you're saving uh, about $30 a card. So $195 for Express uh, versus $165 was what I was seeing through most of the groups. Wow. So um, if you have a lot of high-end cards, um, that's the other way to go too. So just food for thought. All right. Thank you, Tim. Yep.
But uh, PSA, good job. Mail day. Mail day. There we go. Boy, this is a potpourri of everything, isn't it? Yeah, you were supposed to get those cards in the mail, though. So uh, let's actually talk about other mail then. All right. That sounds good to me. I'll go first. I've got a couple, and then we'll let you go. Awesome. Sound good? So a couple of items that I have added to my PC pyramid, which we talked about, I believe, in the first episode of season two. Mm -hmm. First of which being a 2014 Prism Peyton Manning Silver. Okay. PSA 10. Ooh, yeah. There's only eight of these. Yeah. And if you recall, I have a PSA 10 of the 2012 inaugural mm. year of Prism. You do. Which is probably going to lead me to need to grab a PSA 10 in each year of Prism. 13. For Peyton. Right, yeah. And this card, I love it. The As I try to sift through it here, Tim, just to show you, we'll pull it up on the big screen there for YouTube. But this one features an up-close and personal photo of Peyton in the Broncos Orange. I think it's a great looking card. Tim, we'll put it up on the screen there for YouTube so you don't have to worry about that. But this... <laughs> That's still cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, low population count. Very happy with it. Very affordable. I also grabbed in the wrestling world, and I may have hinted at this before. I love revolution. I love wrestling. I found a galactic of the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. This auction ended in the middle of the day. I got it for much cheaper than the other ones that have gone out there. <laughs> You know, these Galactics, you can get about one or two of them per 16 box case. So they're pretty rare. Yeah. Print runs are thought to be in the 10 to 30 ish range of these. A great looking card makes me happy, gives me fond memories of my childhood. And then last one, Tim, mm -hmm. is a card that I discussed that I had purchased oh. during our Super Bowl. Yep. And it has just come back from the very well reputable eBay <laughs> authenticity guarantee program. <laughs> And I just happen to have this right here. Um, Tim, will you open this up and do us the honors as oh, no. to whether or not this card came back authentic. has come back authentic? Oh. And while he does this, this is the 2021 National Treasures Super Bowl Immortality Platinum 1 of 1 of John Elway. Oh, my heart is thumping right now. Is there any doubt? Oh, everyone. Uh, so hold on. Everyone in this hobby knows what this means. There is no greater stamp of approval in the grading card or just regular card industry than having the eBay authenticators tell you, yep, that card's real. <laughs> this moment is huge. I could not sleep all weekend waiting for this. <laughs> hey, it says congratulations. Yes! Bam, baby! <laughs> there it is. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Do you want me to show this or are we going to say hey, No, we're going to throw it up on the screen. We're going to throw it up on the screen <laughs> with a photo. Wow. Oh, my God. What goodness. a moment in my life. This is such a good looking card, though. <laughs> um, I'm sure they just bent the hell out of the corners, oh, stuffing it in. So this looks that grading be, card sleeve. This looks to be a 75 point card thickness. I'm just going to show the yeah. side profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, just crammed right on it in there. Just. Um, this is about the upper limit of thickness of card that I would feel comfortable them authenticating. I don't feel comfortable with them authenticating any card. <laughs> I had a Donovan Mitchell blank slate. There's like two of them in existence and they crammed it in there like they were trying oh, to save money. It's so bad. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't one of our listeners say that they uh, <laughs> bought a slabbed like a uh, stickered um, like it was either a Topps Dynasty or like a flawless um, magged card like with the uh, the panini sticker on it so like how do they authenticate those i think they leave it inside of there <laughs> like what's the point of this can you imagine if they like uh, popped open those seals to take it out of oh. the mag and then pop it back in to pop it back into one of their there sleeves? would be a riot at ebay headquarters you know led that that, by me you know that somebody out there like some new ebay employee did that to one of them at least <laughs> <laughs> if you try, ever see a they try and go back card. in and put a sticker over yep. it it's like a pricing gun yep. sticker that's just put on there and they write in flawless on the top <laughs> <laughs> if there's a raw flawless card out there on ebay right now just know that that might have happened <laughs> oh man wow what a moment Congratulations. So that's <laughs> Nonetheless, awesome the, the yeah. card is super cool. So <laughs> it's a Super Bowl card too. I'm um, kind of a fun mail day, mail week for me, if you will. Hey, uh, uh, your eBay authentication, um, what do we call these? Um, uh, portfolio stand. Um, mm. it, it's color matched to your... Uh, it is. Yeah. eBay is so thoughtful. They're so thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around for the end of this episode. You are going to get your socks knocked right off you with what we have for you in regard to eBay authentication. But Tim, that's my mail day. 
Uh, anything for you? Yeah, I got a couple. So last week, uh, episode three, I talked about this Frank Thomas uh, dynasty card that I won in, a, uh, in my Raz Unretirement um, current stretch. So wow. Yes. 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 Yep. So uh, I just Ooh. love Dynasty. I really need to just, I don't know why it's so underappreciated despite being appreciated. I don't know if it's the cost um, that just withholds uh, people from collecting it more, but um, they're just gorgeous cards, especially the years where, uh, like we talked about last week, where they're not the black and white photos. Exactly, Tim. And that's what I was going to comment on this. The photo is not in black and white, kind of a gold or maybe a beige background. Yeah. So pretty. The foil that is embossed surrounding the patch. And then right on the front, it says game use memorabilia, which I yeah, like. Yeah. And people have to remember that that's why it costs so much. Like game used, game worn, like stuff is just so hard to come by now. Big so. three color patch on there yeah. too. And I feel like I kind of cheated because, you know, the gold background is supposed to be like their one of one color. And, you know, it's not like their true gold gold right, that they right. use for the one of ones. But, you know, it makes it look like it's a one of one. It looks so, so good. It's a good looking card. Wow. And it's a non streaky Frank Thomas auto. So uh, I like it. That's a great one, Tim. Um, and then there's just a couple more um, from 2022 Tops Definitive. Um, should I show these? No, we'll get them up, we'll on, get YouTube. Them up on YouTube. There okay. is a pattern with this. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Frank Thomas Otto, uh, just by himself. And then uh, Jose Abreu, who is uh, no longer with the White Sox now. Um, Frank Thomas and Jose Abreu, kind of the two. Uh, oh, that's nice. Some of the better hitters from the modern White Sox teams. That pinstripe, too. If that was a triple with Pauly Canerco, then uh, that probably would have been about as good as that could have gotten. I but, saw Paul Canerco play triple a down oh, here you? with salt lake bees i don't remember if he was with the bees which wouldn't make a whole lot of sense unless he went up through the minnesota twins now the la angels farm system but i remember, I remember. seeing him play yeah and yeah. he hit a bomb yeah he hit an absolute bomb he could hit. i don't think i'm remembering this incorrectly yeah but yeah that no. dude could mash he could not run but he could mash yeah. that's all you need <laughs> tim these cards are beautiful yeah. and you bought these or you razzed for these um those were tim Tim, those were. <laughs> Tim. Come on. Come on. They were acquired. Acquired. I like that. Yeah. Does that have anything to do with that scar over your kidney? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> well, Tim, one last segment that we have here for the show. Those are beautiful cards. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, uh, we have a mailbag. We do. Okay. Let's hit this mailbag. All right. So let's hit it up. We have we had a number of submissions. We thank everyone who sent in questions. We took four that I want to go over. So Tim, I'll kind of read them off. Uh, mm. Perhaps we'll both throw in an answer, but I want you to start. Okay. From late 90s B-Ball, mm -hmm. who is your most sought after guest for the show that is actually obtainable? Uh, like me personally, or do you think for the show show? Do you have an answer for the show? Because I have one that would be fun for me personally. Answer for you. For me? Yep. Uh, Graham Elliott, celebrity chef. Um, you know, he's a avid sports card collector is what oh, I've understood. Okay. And, um, one, I'm a big fan of cooking, uh, two, uh, the show master chef is just like cocaine for me. I don't know why hmm. I just have these dreams of being like a home chef that uh, somehow makes it big, but realistically that'll never happen, but it's fun to live vicariously through these, uh, uh, highly groomed home chefs. Sure. But, um, yeah. He's a Chicago Cubs fan, which is uh, lamentable. But uh, to have a guy like him who seems passionate about both food and cards on the show to just BS with, that would be fun. I like that a lot. I did not know that he was a card collector. He is, yeah. Now, I kind of went the same route on this, and I tried to think, who's a celebrity that would be a card collector? And I think Von Miller is a card collector. That would make sense. Now, the part that I don't like about this question is actually obtainable. Mm. I'm going to tell you what, late 90s. Anything is possible. Exactly. Why let that stop you, right? Including Von Miller. And so I think Von Miller's the person that I would like to get on the show. Wow. How cool would that be? It would be awesome. And you know what? Any athlete that collects cards, I would love to have them mm -hmm. on there. I still, in all seriousness, can't believe that we had legendary photographer on this show. Oh. I mean, that still blew my mind when he said yes. Right. I mean, you just try for it sometimes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And legendary enough where his name escapes me right now. Mr. Andrew Bernstein. <laughs> Andrew Bernstein, that's right. Thank you thank so you. much for joining us. Yeah. And thank you for all that you do in the hobby for sports photos. Incredible. Yep. 
All right. For the love of cardboard asks, planning on going to the national in Chicago? If so, I'd love to meet you fine fellas. I think we made that pretty clear that we're going. We did. Yeah. And I've not booked flights, but a <laughs> flight. <laughs> which, which you destroyed me at the end of last show. And if you watch YouTube, you can see my reaction, which is priceless. So you did book flight? I booked a flight. Yeah. All right. Very good. We have our hotels. Yeah, that we do. Yeah. Hotels I, because we uh, had to extend a single day because we missed right our schedules. Yeah, but we it's funny. We both did that. Yeah. We, we both screwed out the days, but we will be there. We're going to be there for all four days of the show, correct? Uh, through Saturday. Sunday's technically like another day of the show, but it's mostly a wind down. Through, for, through Saturday. Through Saturday. That. So yep. we will be there. We would absolutely love to meet up with you and everybody else mm-hmm. that listens to the show. Mm-hmm. And we will make that happen. Getting so much time, so much space. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And getting in contact with us through Instagram is the best way to do that yep cardboard underscore king 23 yep no question just a huge fan of the show i listen on podbean in sydney australia a true one of one ah uh, thanks cardboard king 23 now is sydney australia the true one of one or is the show the true one of one uh knowing aussies uh, that's probably referring to sydney so. yeah, as it should yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> but we appreciate that so cardboard underscore king thank you for listening and then surely 2003 for our last one that we're going to discuss here, Tim. Mm-hmm. And I think this one's directed at you. What's, What's better, better? A quality brunch or 10 p.m. brownies a la mode? 10 p.m. brownies a la mode. Get out of here. You know why? Brunch is fairly expensive if you go out and eat, right? Uh, it's also fairly time consuming and smelly if you're making bacon or anything else uh, in the kitchen. Okay. Time consuming as well. Brownies. Dollar forty nine box at Target went on sale. Bake a pan that's thirteen by nine. You get at least you know like four or five uh, brownies a la mode out of there with a special someone that uh, you know you tend to have most nights. So twenty twenty three Tim, yeah. PC Tim, yeah, not a bruncher, uh huh, brownie maker, uh huh, test kitchens back most of the time, yeah. In Razor. Yeah, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, I like it. I like it a lot. And you know what? You can sign me up for both of these things. Uh, unlikely for the 10 p.m. brownies all on mode to happen because mm. I'm already into rent sleep by then, baby. Uh, Tim, anything else you want to add to these guys before we uh, say our farewells? No, just thanks so much for the listener engagement and your patience as we kind of get back into the swing of things, guys. Uh, It's been fun. 2023 is going to be a great year. Um, Look for us on YouTube, as always now. Um, Hop on over there after this, uh, you know, the show has been uh, through your ears. And we love you guys. Till next time.